What's up, Prime Fan? We are in full Sturker Gym. We're gonna take you guys through my heavy SPD day. We got heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, and a heavy bench press variation. So we're gonna walk you through the entire workout. And while I'm talking here in this beginning part, I'll probably splice in my squat warmups just so it's a little less mundane with just staring at my face. But I wanna discuss in today's footage and training vlog, um, the concept of uh, periodizing your mindset along with periodizing your training. So I think these two need to flow together. And I think this is actually one of the most fundamental um, pieces of my coaching that actually leads to success. So I think a lot of people assume coaching is just getting a really awesome custom program, which that's cool. Um, and then also getting <clears throat> amazing feedback on your form and technique and how that kind of evolves over time. But I think um, a large part of my coaching actually that a lot of people don't see and you don't really hear about uh, hear about this being, you don't see this being talked about on Instagram is um, kind of guiding the client through how they need to shift their mindset in different training blocks and phases of training. So currently, as you know, I recently hit a new one rep max on squats, 650. And since then, my goal is not to try to necessarily beat that at least anytime soon. I'm trying to build my foundation up. And because I'm so detrained currently on my squat from volume, just due to that drastic cut I did last year and the way squat training was going, I'm really easing my way back into the higher volume allotments. And I'm kind of preparing this training cycle to lead into a full on meat prep into that spring meat where I do kind of eight weeks of really intensive training. Um, because for me, that's about the most I can handle on like a very genuine and meat prep template because they are very rigorous uh, before I start to see maladaptation. And um, my mindset into this is very different. So you'll notice on today's sets, first of all, I was warming up, um, filming all my singles from 405 upwards all the way up to my top set of 585 um, from the side view to check my depth. So one thing I told myself coming in today is that I know when I'm training with hard volume, especially kind of heavier volume like we've been doing on this recurring training day every Friday, um, my depth gets a little limited and singles feel really heavy on the back. So the two things I'll start to notice during hard training cycles is like the singles won't feel the best on the back and my depth, it's hard to hit that, that hole, especially at heavy weights, not because I'm being ego driven, but literally that's just how tight my hips get. You know, some people aren't going to deal with this as much if they have really awesome mobility. That is not me being six foot and very lanky squats are hard to come by, especially in a low bar position for me when it's high bar, I can sink them pretty fucking deep. So you'll see though, uh, as the weight got heavier, the depth got a little limited. That's okay. I still hit good depth on the top single, which is why I filmed these from the side, my right hip. And it's good to actually know this. And I warned my clients about this. My right hip is always a little higher than my left hip. So that's something I'm always, um, actually filming from my right side rather than my left because that would be the side I get a red light on if any. Um, but generally I know that when I peak and my hips are fresh and there's like very little fatigue on my body, if I peak the right way, I almost go too deep in competition. Um, so it's one of those things where uh, I'm definitely not worried about that. But knowing this, I keep myself accountable to make sure I'm not starting to squat high and use that as an excuse. But more importantly, I really went into today knowing the singles are going to feel heavy and I walked into the gym not with that kind of, um, you know, I'm not trying to prophesize that and, and have it be self-fulfilling, but in the sense that I just know from my training experience, that's what happens. And so what I was really focused on were the back downs. And this is actually the very first training week. And again, I was expecting this, and this is what I would lead a client to expect if I was working with them. I was expecting the back downs to feel far easier than the top set, which the last few weeks, that was not the case. The singles felt really good. The back downs felt very grueling. So this is actually a sign the training's going in the right direction because right now now I'm building capacity, meaning my body's ability to recover from high stress volume um, or high stress amounts, which is really the volume, the total amount of work that you're doing. And this allows me to then push that meat prep phase a little bit harder because you'll see during the meat prep, I want to bring back some really hard, heavy top rep sets. So like we're going to be doing a lot of triples, doubles and singles all at like RP8. And the only way I'm going to survive that is by ensuring I'm building that capacity right now. And sure enough, that was the goal was achieved today. This is a sign that the training's going the right direction. Now, someone who I did not preemptively explain all this to, they would come into today being a little bummed out. Because if you look at how slow that 585 move compared to the 585 I did a few weeks ago, right before the 650, it is like night and day different. But again, if you do the math, that sounds like a large gap, but that's actually about 90% of my max. And to be able to hit that at a clean single with more in the tank, I probably could have doubled that if I really needed to. That's a really good sign that at least the strength is still holding on 
while I'm building that capacity. So again, referencing back to the last video I did, or maybe it was two videos ago, I was explaining how my goal is not to be able to hit my one RM during these phases of training. I don't want to be able to do that unless I'm just getting really lucky and recovery is amazing and that just happens to be able to be possible. But generally speaking, you're gonna come into the gym fatigued because you're training hard. That's the whole point. That's why we peak. Now, I do think some people take this too far and they rely on the super compensatory mechanisms, which I'm doing air quotes because that's literally made up. If you go into the literature in the background about where super compensation came from, it's really debatable if that actually takes place the way we think it does. I think for the most part, there is fatigue you can relieve from the body, but I don't think it works in the modality the way people assume it does. But this is something I want to actually start talking about more on the training because um, or on the channel, excuse me, because someone asked me in my last video, how do you train the mind? Because I went on that whole rant, that epic rant, which by the way, I really appreciate you guys giving me such positive feedback on there. I'll be honest, although I'm someone who tends to not quote unquote care about what people think that much, um, like for instance, I can just vlog in any gym, it could be a 24 hour fitness, I don't care who's staring at me, whatever, I'm doing my thing. It is pretty nerve wracking to see the comments after a video and to see that it's all positive from you guys really does actually make me feel really good. And it lets me know above all else that my message is being received and that it's appreciated. So like, can't stress enough how awesome it was to see all the positive feedback from that video. Sometimes you rant and you're like, am I just talking to like crickets, you know, right now? But um, anyway, in that video, I was kind of expressing a lot of different ideas, but the main theme of what I'm trying to get at here is that to train the mind is uh, multifactorial. Like there's gonna be a lot of factors that go into this. And one of them is actually knowledge and understanding of high theory and concepts when it comes to programming, that if I teach my clients what to expect, their mindset will change and therefore they'll be in more control of their mind. And that is a way to actually train and control your mind instead of panicking today like I would have on that 585, maybe not film from the side, try to squat it high to lie to myself because I'm panicking about how heavy it's feeling. And then you start to get through that phase where you, you just wreck your training cycle. So training the mind, part of it is actually knowledge and uh, conceptual understanding, which I think a good mentor can help you with. The second thing is gonna actually be the literal ways to train your mind, which I'll be covering in other um, videos moving forward. And that sounds really corny, but it, I assure you it's actually not. There's the reason why that Buddhist monk who was protesting the Vietnam Wars could literally emulsify himself, set himself on fire. He sat there completely still, didn't flinch while he was burning alive. Like his entire body, if you haven't seen um, Rage Against the Machines album cover, one of their old album covers, uh, is the picture of that guy on fire. Go check on Spotify. A lot of people don't realize that's what the cover is. Uh, but anyway, we just finished up squats. So 585 on the top set, 495 for a triple, which felt so easy and going super deep on the back downs. Then 465 for two by three. And now we got deadlifts and I still feel fresh, which is really, really positive because last week going into deadlifts was not feeling so fresh. So we're gonna film deadlifts and take you guys through that. All right, fam, so we just finished up uh, some deadlifts. They went really well. So you'll notice today, the theme was move fast and aggressive, but controlled still, because two weeks ago, if you're new to the channel, I popped a rib out of place, which is definitely not fun. And it's such a sudden, acute, intense sensation across your entire rib cage that it's very scary. Like you get PTSD and you start picturing it before you're set. And you start picturing other weird things. I don't know why I kept picturing like, oh, I'm gonna tear a bicep or a tricep or fucking tear an adductor. You'll even see on my last warm up, I kind of grabbed my left leg and I don't know if I actually felt something or I was in my head, but so, so I didn't increase the load from the previous week very much. Only uh, five kilos in total, two and a half on each side. And so, you know, 11 pound jump from the previous week. Last week I did 639 and 595. This week I did 645, uh, or no, sorry, 650 and uh, 601 or whatever the hell the conversion is. Uh, sorry, no, 606 on the back down set of four. I didn't do any extra back downs mainly because I'm trying to stay healthy right now. So as I regain capacity and get past this injury, which it's pretty easy to get past a pop rib, but um, it's just, your mindset really matters. So going with today's theme and really, I would say the majority of my videos themes, uh, I really was training my mind more than the body. I could have easily done more load today, but I realized on the way up that I was being so hesitant that I had to choose a weight that was safe enough for me to apply a little bit more vigor. So you'll see, I really took my time before the top set and the back down set. 
and really unleashed a little bit more aggression into those more than I did actually on my squats. The good thing is the back felt really good and the only the scariest part, there's two. One ripping it off the floor, the second one holding the lockout on the five, or excuse, excuse me, the 606, the last back down. Oh man, that was so scary because that's when it pops, like when I was holding the lockout. So I was, I was not leaning back as much as I was or have done in the past because I feel like that's what caused it. But um, really, really good deadlifts. I'm about to go on to bench press now. Today I have to remember on bench press to rotate my press. I can't do comp bench because it seems whenever I do repetitive movement patterns, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, when it comes to flat pressing, that's what seems to stimulate the pain in the shoulder the most. So today I'm gonna try to warm up close grip Larson, maybe even a floor press, we'll see what I settle on, but some kind of flat um, pressing variation, horizontal press. And uh, we're just gonna build up to a moderate rep set there. And then I might do a little dumbbell bench after just for some extra volume, see if I can get that in healthy without the shoulder aggravating. Uh, and that's really all I'm doing today. Today's theme is a lot of volume on the main lifts, or at least as close to the main lift as I can get the bench press right now. And then go home, recover, eat, rest. Now I wanna talk about mindset in a few other ways. So um, my mind right now I feel like is always honestly really strong with injuries. I've overcome those a million times. Really strong with um, you know being afraid of weights. I will say that almost every top set I've ever done that's a lifetime PR has scared the shit out of me before I do it. I think a lot of people think, um, you know, elite level lifters don't get scared. Uh, there can be no bravery without fear, right? Like I, I actually get really nervous. I told someone before the 650 squat, uh, there's a random guy who came in here to get worked on by one of the guys who does soft tissue work in our gym. And he was, I was asking the guy who does the soft tissue work to spot me and so he had to tell his client to hold on. So he was watching the whole thing and I told him what I was about to attempt. I was like, oh, it's a lifetime PR, but I was like, honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna get it. And he's like, oh, you shouldn't doubt yourself like that. You have to seal the deal before you do it mentally and blah, blah, blah. And if I'm honest, like I, I was like, you know, being nice to him, but like to me, that's like the worst advice. I think believing in yourself in like some way where you, you try to force load onto the bar, you're like, no, I definitely can do that. That gets a lot of love in our culture. I, in my opinion, belief in yourself is being unsure if you can get something, but stepping up to it with full force and attempting it as if you could. Does that make sense? And I, I would say the vast majority of my PRs have gone like that. Same thing with that 640 squat that I manifested that I showed in my favorite PRs video a few videos back. Um, that 640 I like was focused on trying to get in a given time frame and I did achieve it but the day I walked that out and the day I was warming up I literally thought for sure after the 595 warm up before it I was like there's no way I'm getting this but I said I'm gonna attempt it today so I'm gonna attempt it and then I fucking got it so to me I, I believe self-belief is actually way beyond just like sealing the deal before it's done and like envisioning yourself i think that plays a part but if i'm honest i've never done that and that's actually the few times i've tried doing that usually shit goes wrong so you know that's just not really my vibe um but anyway moving on to bench press i will tell you this somewhere my mindset's lacking right now is honestly bulking again especially because i'm training three days a week which my body is thriving off of um, from a strength standpoint but i'm not looking the way i used to look which is killing me and uh, you know, it's it, one I'm bulking up again. So like last summer and or this past summer and before that, you know, after the last meet, I was shredded, guys. I was walking around so lean. I mean, you saw it if you've been following the channel. And to gain weight again, it's I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a mind fuck. You know, uh, some of the guys are probably gonna laugh at this because you know I feel like uh, it's really un, unnatural for guys to you know have head trips about this stuff is what our culture preaches but I'll be honest with you there's times I see myself in photos even now my face looks really bloated and fat I'm like oh you know and like I, I'm not gonna lie I have head trips off of that shit you know I don't fucking go cry about it on Instagram or something but um, I definitely like have some head trips off of gaining weight again and especially because I'm not training as hard as I used to or as hard in the sense that normally I train four or five days a week and I'm doing a lot more accessories but I don't think that's best for my strength gains right now uh, in fact I just respond so well to this like less volume and this is actually a theme I see with a lot of my higher CNS output guys like myself a lot of my clients you know they want to train more and we've tried that and then when we actually bring them to a three or four day split with a little less volume they thrive like their strength goes through the roof and they actually look pretty damn good while doing it too um, but you know there's there's 
you gotta weigh out your goals, right? There will be a time where I start doing a lot more accessories and probably go train four days a week again. I don't think I'll ever return to a five day split, at least not that I can see in the foreseeable future while I'm powerlifting. But I definitely will get back to a four day split when I'm in the off season and trying to build my baseline up and not really worried about the comp lifts. But right now, I'm obviously I'm getting ready for a meet here, hopefully in about 12 to 16 weeks. We're just waiting on the exact date to be scheduled by Joe over at Unleash Strength in uh, Virginia. And so definitely having some head trips, man. And I just like being transparent about this because you know I think uh, we don't have enough conversations about that. And dude, I'll tell you this, the, the number one way you can derail your shit is by worrying about your bulk like I'm kind of doing but then having inappropriate actions where you're under eating and stuff like that. I know I gotta feel my training and I was actually a little light today too, which definitely didn't help that squat top set out. And if I'm being super transparent, I think I was a little light in body weight because I'm having a hard time eating as much as I know I need to because I'm tripping off that weight gain. But you know, saying this out loud keeps me accountable. I say it to you guys, that way you see it firsthand and you see you know, not everyone's like, this hardcore guy who's always into bulking and shit. So I'm gonna do some bench press now, stop rambling, I'll show you guys that. Your boy forgot to do an outro in the gym. So we're doing a voiceover here to finish off the last clips of bench press on this SBD day. And for this day, I went with close grip Larson press. Now, the goal here is to just continuously rotate that pressing exercise. And that actually brings me to my next point that I want to discuss here about periodization of the mindset and how that can flow along with your periodization of training. I want to talk about the hierarchy of progression or kind of the order of progression in which I'm currently focused on in my own lift. So what I mean by that is my squat just hit a lifetime PR and I'm not really, like I said, looking to progress it into even bigger lifetime PRs. If that happens, cool, but chances are it's not with the way I'm approaching it, both mindset and programming wise, because I'm trying to ingrain that um, lifetime PR now to where I can hit it on any given peak day, right? Because that's really how strength comes at the advanced level. You can hit a all out PR during a peak and then not come back to that kind of load for a long while because you had to build up so much work just to get there. I'm trying to ingrain that while we raise my deadlift baseline again. So essentially my order of importance is deadlift has the highest focal point right now as far as me trying to throw load on the bar. My focus is all on the deadlift. I am I'm trying to get my deadlift back up to that 760 range, which was my lifetime PR I hit over the summer. And I'm trying to pair that with the 650 squat. So the squat we're trying to maintain right now because the squat is so well entrained. The deadlift we're trying to build back up and then the bench press we're trying to rehab. So I have kind of an order to my progression of what my expectations are every time I step into the gym. So because the bench press is so limited, clearly, obviously, I'm not gonna be expecting too much. And on this day, the best I could muster up was a 265 close grip, um, kind of long pause. I decided to like pause a little bit longer on the top set here uh, with this close grip Larson. And that was enough work to stimulate some hypertrophy, some strength, and kind of maintain everything without pushing the shoulder over the edge. Again, if my mindset isn't in the right space when I step into the gym, this workout would really bother me. But because I've already have some preordained expectations that are congruent with my current training periodization, that's gonna allow me to have the best workout and leave there feeling fulfilled and also leave there doing the correct things. Same thing on the squat, I knew the top single wouldn't go that well because I'm building that baseline strength up. But like you guys saw in the back down sets, they're fucking flying. The deadlift is continuing to climb even through this weird rib pop that I had. And so we're, we're putting everything together. So I'm approaching the training with the appropriate mindset on every single day to ensure that everything is going the way it needs to into this meet. And you'll see how this will allow for the largest total possible compared to just trying to shove load on the bar with every single exercise at all times. You're just gonna lead to burnout. That's the video, guys. Comment down below. If you're interested in coaching, fill it out in the description box, and I'll see you guys in the next video.